while John Henry Weston and Liz Yore are on their way to the 2023 Rome Life Forum. LifeSide News brings you this special episode of Faith and Reason, recalling Donald Trump's forecast for World War III and Pope Francis's continued attacks on the traditional Latin Mass. Starting off with, you know, President Trump's warning, um, why don't we take a look at that and then um, I'd love to hear your take on it. World War III has never been closer than it is right now. We need to clean house of all of the warmongers and America last globalists and the deep state, the Pentagon, the State Department, and the national security industrial complex. Hey friends, so to celebrate the momentous overturning of Roe v. Wade, we at LifeSite have minted just under 10,000 of these brand new limited edition pro-life silver rounds. Each round is stamped on the back with an image of the Supreme Court of the United States featuring the date that the High Court delivered this historic victory. And on the front of our pure silver rounds, there's the LifeSite logo surrounded by a brilliant sunburst and draped with olive branches to commemorate LifeSite's 25 years anniversary of serving the pro-life and pro-family community. I want you to know too that if you go to St. Joseph's Partners through the LifeSite link, you will be able to fulfill there all of your silver and gold needs in this perilous time. May God bless you. Well, you know, he's quite frankly, the only one who is talking about um, the threat of nuclear war. You know, it's interesting and troubling that nuclear, the word nuclear has been thrown around by President Biden. This is, you know, very disturbing. Meanwhile, while the Chinese regime is coming closer to supplying weapons to Russia, there is now what appears to be an alliance between Iran, Russia, and China. And um, the US and NATO seem to be plotting um, a more serious war, ramping it up with President uh, Biden being in Poland and his secret trip to Ukraine, although there's been no declaration of war. Um, this is a distant border. Our own border is being invaded. And at the same time, all of this is happening. There's um, chaos and indifference at home. You know, uh, we talk about a nuclear conflagration. Apparently, you know, we have a rail de derailment in Palestine, Ohio, that President Trump went to um, this week um, to view the damage. And it, our own government can't get there to help these poor people to clean up with the terrible one million pounds of vinyl chloride, chloride has spilled into this really hazardous substance, cancer ca causing substance. And when it's mixed with water, it becomes hydrochloric acid. So we have chaos at home, we have chaos abroad, and President Trump is really sounding the alarm that we are closer than ever to nuclear war, to th the third world war that has been um, prophesied um, by many seers, by our blessed mother. And so I think these are serious times and we should have serious leaders who um, are put the American people first and are trying to pursue peace and not war. I've been following the Abrahamic Faith Initiative and Center um, since its beginning. And the beginning began, is, as many of you may recall, in February 2019, when Pope Francis went to, um, uh, I think it was Saudi Arabia, Ab or Abu Dhabi, I'm not sure which, and signed the Abrahamic Faith Initiative and the Abu Dhabi Declaration. There was a great furor over that because in that document, it said, God wills all religions. And um, you know, that is not, you know, that's not the Catholic point of view. And interestingly, Bishop Athanasius Schneider confronted the Pope about that document. And the document was, um, and, and the Pope backed off and said, oh, yeah, yes, God only permits, God permits um, all these religions. He doesn't will, that isn't part of the will of God. So he backed off. Um, fortunately, Bishop Schneider told the world um, that, but the document, if you look on the website, has never been changed. 
And so as a, this document was the formal uh, foundation of this new Abrahamic faith initiative and center, the Abrahamic Faith House, it's called. It's in Abu Dhabi in UAE, a brand new headquarters, as it will. Three major religions coming together with their own separate um, buildings, both ref all three reflecting um, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, sitting on the same, and it's been finished. And there was on the same day, that Pope Francis issued his latest rescript on the Latin mass, there was this consecration or opening of the Abrahamic faith uh, center. Now, I, you know, we'll be showing some videos, but you will recall that Pope Francis, when he signed the Abu Dhabi declaration, he was at the table with the head of the Sunni faith, the Islam faith. His name is Ahmad El Tayeb very famous, well-known, prominent um, Sunni religious figure. What troubled me when I began to research this individual, because Pope Francis keeps saying to us, oh, we, you know, humanity and fraternity and humanism, and we're all on the, we all love the same God, and we all share, um, the, you know, the same love of human fraternity and brotherhood and we will all dialogue together, a utopia on earth. Well, this Ahmad Al-Tayyab, and we'll show you the clip, he does not believe, as does um, the great legal jurist from the Islam faith, um, when somebody leaves the Muslim faith, they are considered an apostate. And Al-Tayyab, in this interview that we're going to show, Al-Tayyab says anybody who leaves the Muslim faith should be killed. That is the punishment from all the jurisprudence in the Muslim faith. So we have this beautiful campus now with three major buildings, you know, with a highly produced video. We're now going to have this one world religion where everybody will get along except for the fact if somebody goes to the mosque and happens to come across to the Catholic or Christian church and decides they want to be a Christian, well, they're going to be killed. So that is the reality of what we are dealing with. You know, the signing of the document, the hugging and the kissing of Francis and Al-Tayyab, it is a fraud. It is a farce because in reality, um, this Al-Tayyab says Islam is incompatible with the West. Those are out of, it's out of his mouth. So um, we are to believe that this one world religion, this Abrahamic faith center is one in which um, peace will be restored. In fact, there are serious differences as 2000 years of Christianity um, has proven, serious differences between the religions. The job of the Pope is to protect the teachings of the Catholic Church and to evangelize the faith, not to hug and kiss and sign agreements with somebody who he pretends to be his brother in the faith. Um, so it's a very troubling development the campus of the Abrahamic Faith Center, I'd urge everybody to go on and look at it. It's a highly produced, um, beautiful um, documentary of this new, what I would call the new headquarters of the one world religion. And if you look at the Christian church, it is sterile. There is no signs of Jesus Christ. There is no tabernacle. It is walking in to a cold place that doesn't reflect the Christian faith, not even the Catholic, the Christian faith at all. They do have a crucifix there that's kind of small and remote, it's hard to catch, but it's very much modernist, but it's- Totally modernist, totally modernist. Um, I guess reflecting many of the churches that have been built after Vatican II. And we're going to be seeing more and more of this Abrahamic Faith Center. There's going to be more and more events there. And um, we're all supposed to, you know, bury our, bury our heads in the sand and believe that um, we can all have um, 
peace and happiness, of course, peace and happiness will only be an eternity. Um, but it's, it's a fraud, in my opinion, that's been pursued by Francis and been really shoved down our throats and, you know, hoping that we're not going to investigate and look at really what is operational and what's going on with these individuals that he signed peace packs with. Absolutely. Let's take a look at that now. Pope Francis signing on uh, with the head of the Sunni church, the, the Islamic church. And here is the Islamic leader himself, same one who signed with Francis uh, and his take on uh, their kind of compatibility uh, with Christians in the West. Is equality an absolute principle or a limited principle? We can see that the Islamic notion of equality is limited. However, the Western notion of equality is, I'm very sad to say, absolute. It has destroyed, or has strived to destroy, many of the values that are more vital for the stability of our people's lives. If we examine the Western notion of equality, as a researcher, I have the right to say that in my opinion, this notion is false. Let me give you the website description of the Christian church. And our audience are now going to understand that there's no coincidences with the, the Latin mass being uh, suppressed and this new Abrahamic faith house being christened. Here's the description. A church designed for different Christian denominations to worship. A communal ceremony of togetherness are given priority with a water element existing outside the church's entrance and manifesting as a ritual of crossing over as opposed to the sequence of descent occurring in a mosque, in a synagogue. And oh, by the way, the name of the Christian church, it has two names. One is His Holiness Saint, His Holiness Francis, and the other name is St. Francis Church. So that, that's the new name of this church. And for that very reason, because the Latin Mass cannot be modified. It cannot be played with. It is strict. It is um, transcendent. It is disciplined. It cannot be inclusive of all the Christian celebrations, like, quite frankly, the Novus Ordo Mass. I mean, I'm from Chicago. Uh, St. Sabina's with uh, Father Flager. You know, you see how they have modified and transformed and bastardized the Novus Ordo because it can be. And for that reason, at this point in time, because of the push for the one world religion, the Latin mass, the mass of all ages for 2000 years, the mass of saints has to be crushed and suppressed because it cannot be bootstrapped into this radical Abrahamic faith um, initiative. And so for that reason, that's why it's happening folks. And that's why as Bishop Schneider pointed out, and has been speaking so bravely, John Henry, in your interview with him about the importance of disobeying Jorge Bergoglio on, and that we must go underground, we must keep the Latin mass alive because they, the globalists and their chaplain, Jorge Bergoglio, do not want the Latin mass around because it is the pure representation of the Catholic faith of 2000 years. And so for that reason, we are dealing with this rescript and this traditionus custodas, and there will be more and more um, edicts from the Pope of Dialogue, right? The Pope of Dialogue, the Pope of Synod. We remember all the bishops were, it was going to be decentralized from the Vatican, right? That was the goal of this pontificate. And all of a sudden, he is the one who makes the decisions about whether a beautiful parish 
that has a Latin mass for the last 20 years is going to be able to continue it. This is what's going on. It's all connected and it's important to really connect the dots and it requires all of us to dig deep into what's going on with the globalists and their one world religion and what's going on in the Catholic church to suppress the beautiful Latin maps. Edward Petten has a very interesting interview with Monsignor Bucks about there is um, a great deal of turmoil right now in the College of Cardinals um, and among the priests. Um, Monsignor Bucks believes that people are waking up and are very, very troubled about what's going on and a great deal of resistance in the Curia about Francis's promulgation of this apostolic constitution suppressing the Latin mass. So what all the many of the bishops were doing were saying, wait, the Latin mass has been such a gift in my diocese. So under Canon 87, section one, I am going to assert that this Latin mass can continue. Roach got word of this and um, went back to the Pope. And so what they've basically done is voided Canon 87. And I have to say, you know, I've been hearing from many, many Latin mass goers watching the internet, um, social media. People are really very upset and very disturbed and looking for guidance and, you know, want to obey the Pope, but would never go to Novus Ordo Mass and are really in this nightmare of, of a choice, of a, so a Sophie's choice. And so, you know, what, you know, what I think they need to do is listen to um, Bishop Schneider and, and his interview about what needs to be done. The Pope um, is um, really doing a disservice to the church um, that whatever we need to do, we keep the Latin mass alive. And, you know, people have got to remember the same thing happened with the underground Chinese church. You know, those faithful people since 1950 who refused to join the patriotic church because the patriotic church was created by the communist party in China. It was an ape of the Catholic church and good Catholics in China understood this. They went underground to practice their faith rather than to go to all the churches that had the patriot, all the patriotic churches. So what happens in 2018? These faithful people are now told by Rome, who they've been listening to all these years and being faithful to, oh, you can go to the, the patriotic church. And still they kept the faith and they went deeper underground. Priests refused to sign a lo loyalty oath to the patriotic church. Which the Vatican told them they could sign, by the yes. way. Yes. Bishops refused to sign that, some of which have been arrested and disappeared. Um, this is the situation that has been brought about by Bergoglio and his secret deal with, that has been renewed twice. So we in America, in the Western world, we're going to suffer. We're going to be under persecution. We didn't think that the person, we thought the persecution was going to come from outside the church but it's coming from within the church. But we have to take a lesson from, you know, people like Athanasius Schneider, who, who you know, was baptized um, in the underground church and practiced the faith in, an, uh, in the underground church. Just a quick note before we return. If you would like to stay up to date on LifeSite's coverage of the latest life, family, and culture news, subscribe to one of our many newsletters by going to lifesitenews.com slash subscribe. And if you'd like to help us bring our truth-telling coverage to millions around the world, please consider making a one-time or monthly donation at give.lifesitenews.com. And now, back to the video. I think Bishop Schneider is so holy. His witness of holiness and fidelity to the faith is so important. We should actually play that clip of, because I did ask him that very question of what to do now that this is being restricted by the Pope, what are we to do? And his answer was very clear. In these times, we are able to disobey, rightfully so, 
Let's have a look at what he says. St. Thomas Aquinas says that an absolute, unconditional obedience we owe only to God alone, to no creature, even not to the Pope. And so the obedience uh, towards the Pope and the bishops in the Church is a limited obedience. And so when the Pope or the bishops are commanding something which will evidently undermine the fullness of the Catholic faith and the fullness of the Catholic liturgy, the, this treasure of the Church, the traditional Latin Mass, and harm by, and by undermining uh, the purity of faith, by undermining the, the purity of the sacredness of the liturgy, we are harming the entire Church. We are decreasing the good of the Church, the spiritual good of the Church. We are decreasing uh, the good of the souls. And here we cannot collaborate. How we can collaborate diminishing uh, the purity of the, of the faith? How we can collaborate diminishing the, the sacredness, the sublimity of the liturgy of the Holy Mass, which is the millennium old traditional mass of all the saints. And in these cases, we are even obliged, not only we can, some, in some occasion, occasions we must, say to the Holy Father, to the Bishop, with all due respect and love for you, we cannot execute these orders which you are giving because they are harming the good of our Holy Mother Church. And so we have to seek other uh, places and nevertheless be in some way formally disobedient, but in fact we will be obedient to our Holy Mother Church, which is greater than a singular Pope. The Holy Mother Church is greater than a singular Pope. And so we are obedient to our Holy Mother Church. We are obedient to the popes of all ages who promoted, defended, protected the purity of Catholic faith unconditionally, uncompromisingly, and who defended also the, the sacredness and the unchanging liturgy of the Holy Mass through the centuries.